Um, hi, I'm Rachel Gorge. I'm the office manager at Bracknell Town Council. Uh, we're the largest parish council in uh, the Bracknell Forest Borough. Um, we have 12 wards and 27 councillors. We, we've decided that it's time to upgrade and this does mean at this point upgrading everything because without changing the internet we can't move on to cloudy and uh, using Microsoft Teams and things like that. Um, but hybrid meetings are something that it's going to be so useful for us um, into the future. So even though legally at the moment we're not allowed to hold hybrid meetings, um, we can involve the public through the hybrid technology that Cloudy have installed for us. So we can allow people who don't live locally to do presentations for the council. We can allow public to join from the comfort of their own homes. So part of installing the hybrid meeting equipment is to try to reduce our carbon footprint a bit. And this is one of the ways we're going to start to do that. The system that you've installed for us um, was tailored to our needs. So we have quite a large council chamber having 27 councillors. We also then have at least three officers present when we have a full council meeting. Sometimes we can have the public in the room and the shape of our room, the shape of our table and how people sit in the meetings was really a big part of it. You discussed all of the different options with us to make sure that we were getting the right level of technology for um, the size of room and the amount of people that we're going to have in there. Um, after doing a test with you, after you installed it, I'm absolutely amazed that you don't have to shout when you're at the opposite end of the room um, to be heard. And also, it's not blasting in your ears, which other companies were concerned about the strength of the speakers you might have to use could impact those people sitting closest to them but you've managed to work out a system that will work for everybody in that room um, the installation process from Cloudy was great as well um, we had again lots of clean communication when it came to sorting out dates and organizing parking and everything that we needed for us to be organized um, you arrived with all of the equipment that you needed and you just got on with it. Um, the one thing I would say is that I was sad that you didn't have a lunch break and you just carried on straight through <laughs> because you were working non-stop for the, all, all those hours that you were there. Um, you were relentless, let's be honest. <laughs> you were relentless. You guys just, you got the job done. It looks fantastic. You tidied up afterwards and um, it is brilliant from the beginning of dealing with Cloudy, the customer service has been exceptional. Um, I've not had as many demos with, in fact, I've had no demos with other companies, um, whereas you did three demos for us. Um, you visited us several times, we've had several calls, and just that connection that we've got and the communication has been second to none, and that was a real big, um, pushing point in us moving with Cloudy, especially for our hybrid equipment.
Good morning and thank you for joining us for our broadcasting and council meeting mini summit. We're really looking forward to putting this event on today and we're so glad that so many people have turned up to watch it. It's been really exciting putting this together and we've had over 400 councils sign up to this event. So obviously really popular and we're seeing lots of interest in broadcasting your meetings. Um, so we've got a really exciting agenda lined up today. We've got some uh, wonderful experts from Logitech and from Optima, as well as some councils join us today from Buckingham Town Council. Now, unfortunately, Rachel from Bracknell has had to isolate. Um, so a bit of a nightmare. But as you can see earlier on, Rachel did leave a really kind message. And if you did leave, uh, if you did miss that, we'll play the message at the end of of today and it also will be available from our website. Um, but thanks everyone for joining us today. We're really looking forward to putting on an event where people can really understand a bit more about broadcasting their council meetings and really see the benefits and why using good equipment from the, the cameras to the projectors can really make sure that you have an engaging meeting that the public and the people attending and people actually being in the meeting can really get some valuable outcomes from. Um, so thanks very much experts and thanks so much Claire for joining us. We'll come and join you a bit later on. Um, very quickly, in terms of the agenda today, we've got the uh, first part where I'll be talking a bit about broadcasting council meetings, what we're seeing. We're working with lots of councils at the moment about broadcasting their meetings, and we're hearing it over and over again about the correct equipment and trying to make sure it's simple to use and all, all those positive things. But then we'll be moving on to uh, Nigel, who's the video collaboration specialist from Logitech, and he'll be running through some of the products that Logitech provide for doing this. And they, they provide some great equipment and microphones, cameras that really ensure that when you do broadcast those meetings, you get the best results. We'll be joined by Buckingham Town Council, have just recently bought a Logitech meetup and a, and a microphone. And unfortunately, as I mentioned, Rachel, can't join us due to isolation but we actually do have a rally plus system that we will be logging into later and my colleague dan will be speaking live from that uh, then we'll be talking to peter ayres who uh, basically is a, a digital specialist for optima he'll be talking about the optima range of projectors and these are really useful because they're portable there's less hassle in terms of putting them up on the wall and they can be really effective so especially the new laser projectors that can even work in in sort of very light conditions and then finally, I'll be talking about agenda pack solutions and how it integrates into your broadcasting solution so that this digital agenda, which is easier to build, distribute for your councillors to engage in and for those follow ups to be followed up correctly. And then we'll be doing some Q&A session at the end. So really packed session, uh, lots going on. Um, so it should be really good. Right. So in terms of what we're seeing, I mean, hybrid meetings wasn't really a thing for local government until recently. Um, but, you know, due to COVID, we're finding ourselves, you know, when we are uh, meeting virtually over Zoom or Teams, that actually engagement with the public has increased. And we know the law did change and people are going back to meeting in person. But I think there's so many su successful stories of how the public have engaged, how councillors have engaged and all sorts of other organisations and individuals. But, you know, we want to continue that progress. And, you know, maybe in the future, the law will change and councillors will be able to vote. But what we are seeing um, that, you know, the public can engage with a council meeting. Um, officers can join council meetings. Um, suppliers and vendors can also join those meetings. There's less travelling involved. So good for the environment as well. So there's lots of benefits to using broadcasting and hybrid solutions. Um, and we're seeing some great you know, uh, responses across the board from the industry, companies like Logitech, Microsoft, Zoom, to make it as easy to use as possible and cost effective. So hopefully, um, you know, uh, we, we've all seen the benefits of hybrid meetings, but now we go to meeting in person. How do we make that happen? And how, we do, how do we continue that? Um, so we do have lots of people commenting on YouTube as well, which is great. So thanks ever so much. We've got a Q&A session at the end. So if there's any questions, to, please do put them in the chat and we'd be happy to answer them with our experts and with our councils that are joining us. Um, but uh, and if we don't get time, we'll, we'll respond to all of them anyway. So lots of opportunities here, but let's move on and we'll introduce Nigel. So, Nigel, are you there, please? Morning, David. Thanks for inviting us to this. Yeah, thanks, Nigel, for joining us. So, uh, Nigel, uh, I mean, you are the expert when it comes to uh, public sector broadcasting and video and audio equipment. So really glad to have you here today to speak to all our councils. Um, 
And, you know, we've got a couple of uh, different slides you'll be talking through about the main products that we think are appropriate for local government. Um, and what we're really focused on here are the, you know, the, the smallest of councils from a parish council with a small preset to a large town council. And, you know, the, the equipment you do sell you know, does suit those budgets. So uh, it'll be great to hear more about the features and the benefits and obviously bring our councils in to to talk live using those bits of equipment as well. So, um, yeah, Nigel, I'll pass it over to you and uh, looking forward to it. Thanks, David. I, I think one of the most important things um, when we start to talk about these is really the sort of the challenges the councils go through when they're trying to actually get people within the room to be heard from people outside the room. So I think one of the things from a logistic perspective is we consider from a public sector and we've done many sessions within the council environment as to how that sort of equipment really comes in. But I also think sometimes when you're looking at these type of solutions, you've got to consider other elements. And from a Logitech perspective, the global field that we have means that then we are working with other public sector organizations around the globe, looking at how they're working. I mean, if you take Mexico, for instance, from a, a public sector environment, they have been remote learning for forever. You know, they have very, very, very uh, few actual education environments that didn't have remote students. So the way they've been working for many, many years now, and you could take up to 10 years plus within that environment in a public sector environment, we've really embraced that now over the sort of lockdown period and really started to bring it forward. So you have education and then you have town councils and those are very, very in intuitively linked. One of the other things is really is about design for us. We have brought a range of products to the marketplace that in actual fact are easy for users to use. That's the most critical piece. Can you walk into a room? Can you get a meeting up and running without needing a full AV team just to follow you in the room? You still need those guys to keep the technology up and running, but do you need them to follow the user the whole time? That's a consideration. And sustainability, huge for us in the context of what we use to make the products. Can they be recycled? What's the sustainability credentials? Because many, many, many councils and many public sector organizations now are also being challenged over the sust sustainability credentials of the solutions that they are deploying. <clears throat> so Logitech have looked at that largely. And I think the most important one is operations as well. How do these things operate? You know, how does the volume work? Is it highly adaptive in there? You know, and are we actually putting a large enough portfolio out there for customers to be able to do something from a single personal element? Today, you're seeing me on a Logitech Brio and you're hearing me through a Logitech Zones headset for this meeting. And I suppose the last and key piece for this is the reach and unparalleled. We do multiple elements across the globe, but most importantly, across the UK environment, we have four main distribution partners within the UK that have stock. We kind of got over some of the Brexit elements. We stopped coming into the UK market and now we have a really great stock profile within there. So if there are council projects that are looking to deploy really, really quickly, we've managed to make sure that the stock is available to deploy those projects as well. So there isn't the ability to slow them down. So let me move on to our first product, Meetup. This is where it all started. You could call it an extra large webcam. Um, I'd like to call it probably one of the first plug and play elements that allowed more than a single user, or uh, up to about eight users to come in front of a webcam, be seen dynamically, but also to be heard dynamically as well. So this was one of the first products that came to marketplace for the video collaboration industry that actually embedded microphones and speakers and a camera all in one product. And it was a revolutionary product, the shape, the size, the scalability of it, the fact that it was plug and play originally, so it was working with multiple platforms and then had the ability to be adapted into room systems as they've come along. So I think one of the most important things is, is the quantity of awards that we have won for the design of this. It's been around now for around about six to seven years, so it's not a new product, but what it has done is in actual fact shaped in the size of the industry that we've, we're involved in. And at this moment in time, it's still been a very, very widely used product. All of the updates for this product are done via firmware, which means that even if you have one of these products from five or six years ago, you still have the capability with our design elements to bring this product all the way forward to today's standards. So the acoustics in there is meeting today's standards, you know, rooms with more glass, more wood floors, very high ceilings, meeting rooms required that weren't meeting rooms. They could have been an office, they could have been a classroom, but now are required to be a meeting room under today's terms. 
And the meetup really fits this profile. So it's a fantastic product from a one to eight um, perspective within a room. The product also meets roughly a room size of around about three to five meters. But as an overall product, it started it all for Logitech. Our design elements, the shape, the size, and the camera. So just moving on, I'm going to move on now to Buckingham Town Council, David. Yeah, thanks, Nigel. Um, so um, we're joined by Claire. Claire, thanks ever so much for joining us. We really appreciate you giving up your time and, and also putting yourself in one of the spotlight as well. So, um, Claire, Buckingham Town Council, uh, we're obviously looking to, uh, I think, successfully been running um, um, broadcasting your meetings virtually over Zoom onto YouTube. And obviously you were looking to uh, to continue that whilst move, move, meeting in person. So uh, obviously you, you chose the Meetup product and you're, you're speaking to us from it today. But um, yeah, how is it all going, Claire? Yeah, it's been uh, going very well. The system went in yesterday, um, obviously tested it with yourselves, make sure it was all working properly. And uh, did a little bit of a test with my team for a few of our Zoom meetings. Uh, after Ryan had left yesterday, and it was all working perfectly. Brilliant. Well, that's great to hear. And um, I mean, you know, as I mentioned, you know, Buckingham has seen some really good engagement from putting your meetings on YouTube and stuff. And I, I know you wanted to continue that. What was the thinking behind buying the Meetup product then? Well, like most councils, we moved to virtual meetings throughout the pandemic. Um, and one of the first things we did was start streaming them live on YouTube and set up our YouTube channel so anyone can come and look at our meetings at any point. Um, they actually turned out to be surprisingly popular. I mean, we were getting, I think the, we had more than 160 people watch one of our uh, committee meetings, for instance, which is considerably more than we could ever dream of having. We wouldn't get anybody near that in the room. It seemed to be surprisingly popular. Um, people, for instance, if you had a planning application, you might be interested to see what was discussed in your planning application. So people would maybe just watch that bit of the meeting so they could properly understand what was discussed and why the decision was made. And then when we actually had our first proper physical meeting, we did have members of the public turn up and say how much they appreciated them being available online and how much they wanted us to continue doing that. So our councillors were very keen that we had some sort of recording equipment available that we could stream live to YouTube and that was easy for them to use, that the mayor at the back can be heard, people at the front can be heard, and everybody can hear what's being said um, on the screen as well. Brilliant. That's great to hear. And um, I mean, just to confirm with the, the meetup, you, you've got the ability for one extra microphone, which you've got in the centre of the table there. Um, uh, you've got the, um, the, the, the controls as well, which has a number of presets. You can do you want to press the home button for us just to, for, the, for people to see how it works? So at the moment, when you press the home button, it does that. And then it will auto track and actually move into the people who are who are who are uh, available for the meeting. So it, it hones back in on Claire. But um, Claire, well, thanks ever so much. We know, obviously, you know, the room you've got there is actually a bit bigger than describing what Nigel with the meetup requirements are. But I think it, it's coming across really well. And the, the, the main thing is, obviously, that there's no perfect um, setup. But obviously, it's really important to try and get the right product for the right room. And this is a entry level product for, 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 for councils. But as we can see, it's got some great features as well. But um, yeah, you know, thanks for joining us. Is there anything else that I might have missed that you'd want to say before we go? Um, no, just that, I mean, from our point of view, moving to hybrid, a lot of the things that you've already talked about, staff being able to dial in, so maybe if we have a staff member who's only got one small item on the agenda, rather than have to drive all the way in to physically be here, they can dial in. We can get contractors can dial in if their questions councillors want to put. Let's say it was a planning meeting, we could have maybe somebody from the, uh, the Housing Association or, or whoever it is that's relevant dial in and speak directly to our councillors and then there is the hope um, that eventually our councillors will be able to vote and we'll have be able to have full hybrid meetings. I would say we had an interesting thing last week and one of our councillors dialed in from Germany on a working group that we were holding and we've had other councillors dial into meetings who are away on the holidays at the moment which is fantastic because that's a level of engagement we wouldn't have had those councillors being able to take part in those meetings. Um, yeah. And I suppose the last thing from our point of view is we're hoping that it will make it easier for us to recruit a wider pool of counsellors because if you know, if you've got a parent or you're a carer, you know that you could dial in from home while the kids sleep upstairs or whatever other commitment you've got instead of needing to physically be here on a, on a Monday night at 7 o'clock. 
um, that would be the future for us. So we're hopeful that's where we're going. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's flexibility, isn't it? And, uh, you know, as we go back to normality, we want to take some of that flexibility with us, clearly. So, well, well thanks ever so much, Claire. We're, we're really looking forward to continuing to watch your, your meetings virtually online on YouTube. So, um, yeah, thanks very much for coming along today and we'll chat soon. If you could stay at the end for Q&As, if that's OK, if anyone's got any questions directly for you, that'd be wonderful. Um, so cheers, Claire. Brilliant. Well, obviously, that was Claire from Buckingham Town Council talking about their reasons behind purchasing the, the Logitech meetup. Um, but Nigel's going to continue talking about the other products in the, in the Logitech range, and these are for um, larger rooms or for the ability to do more complicated configurations, so maybe about a laptop, so it's all built into the device. But Nigel, um, obviously some of the things that Claire mentioned there, some of the things you'll see across the board, but um, yeah, pretty interesting, isn't it? You know, it's really interesting, isn't it? Because when you, when you sort of specify a product for work, we I mean, we specify a particular size. I suppose it's to be cautious that we get the right thing. When you hear one of the products sort of in a room like such as that, and you can hear Claire really clearly, you know, you sort of really start to feel quite proud about the product um, because it's a really, really great price product for that type of room and to hear Claire so clearly within that environment. It was really great to see Claire being able to use a functionality on the remote control, nice and simply, nice and straightforward, but also seeing the camera come back to Claire. That's the kind of a, a kind of sort of fingers crossed moment for an awful lot of people that don't want to touch a remote control because they're scared of changing the parameters. They just want to sit there, camera faced on them. So yeah, it, it was fabulous. It was really great. And I, and I suppose moving along from the meetup, um, as an awful lot of the audience can see now, the design style of the meetup has kind of led us to sort of widen that portfolio out so new to the market next month will be the rally bar mini so out of the three products you can see on the screen at this moment in time sized wise we have the logitech tap which makes all of our products including the meetup then versatile for room systems so those room systems can be microsoft teams they can be zoom they can be google you know and there are other application platforms coming on all the time that customers are using but they want to walk into the room and be able to just do a one-touch join they want to be able to schedule the meeting so they have a calendar within that device where they can walk into the room and just touch the device and then get on with the meeting the meetup's perfect with this product. You know, it connects really well with this product. It can turn a small bring your own device room where you bring a laptop along or plug it into a USB cable into a room. It allows you to sort of see the calendars that are there. It allows to see the one and it allows users to simply hit a button that says join, join the meeting and then to be able to control the meeting. Now, what we've done here is we've then extended that sort of uh, meetup portfolio. So we now have a rally portfolio. The Rally Bar Mini that I indicated before in August is the first one just next to the meetup within the image. This is a big brother to the meetup. Now, one of the biggest differences with this is its audio capability takes us to a slightly larger room format without the need for an extended microphone that you saw within Claire's demonstration there. So we can cover a slightly big port, um, um, area, but here's the key critical difference and where the marketplace is going. The Rally Bar Mini, and it's even bigger brother, the Rally Bar, which is the second one within that sequence, has the capability of onboard Android and onboard AI. So this means that will there be compute within the rooms? Yes, there will be. There'll always be the need for compute. But have organizations such as Microsoft and Teams recognize that they could put a scaled down version of this, still be able to use the tap and control, but you would actually have Microsoft Teams and Zoom inside the actual camera product. So now Logitech have brought a product to marketplace that in actual fact will have Microsoft Teams and Zoom and other platforms embedded with inside, controllable via the tap, that give you that large room experience. Also, what you've got within these sort of cameras is the capability to do some insights for the room. So you can look at usability. While we're still currently coming out of lockdown uh, measures at this moment in time, if you wanted to use some of those features to allow you to be able to physically judge whether you've got the right amount of people in the room. So if a 20 person room has now been denoted, it's only eight people, you can get some insights from there just to make sure you're saying, staying COVID safe within your council sessions. So we have the tap, the rally bar mini, and we have the rally bar, giving us a much bigger field of view, a much bigger spread. Now with the rally bar, 
We also now have the capabilities to be putting seeding mics in. Some of the councils that we've talked to don't have the capability or they have an ever-changing room where the table set up for certain council meetings needs to move. So it's not always going to be one table in the same place in every meeting. With the rally bar, you can then extend out with three microphones that can all be into ceiling tiles. We now have in each of these products, white products. So if you wanted to put a white rally bar mini or a white rally bar on the wall with white ceiling mics as well to meet in with the decor, or you can keep to the really good quality charcoal gray. One of the nice things about our products here and what we've considered with these microphones is they're all plethium rated. So they meet building standards. If you place a cable or you place anything in a ceiling, it has to meet a particular standard for your fire regulations. So we're kind of considering the design and making sure we're staying within those regulations. And I suppose last but not least, the really big brother to all of these, the rally, the rally system. So it comes as a rally or a rally plus. The one that you're seeing within the picture I've got here is a Rally Plus because it comes with two speakers, a single mic, a single camera that has the ability to be placed anywhere that you need it to. You can also invert this camera. So if it needs to go on a ceiling, it can be placed on a ceiling. It will autom automatically invert its settings. So up will be up, down will be down still, left will be left and right will be right. But it's a really great product and this product allows us to extend out into 46 seats within a room area so it gives us a much much bigger spread and one of the nice things in council meetings we have a diagonal track within this product and we're one of the only companies with a diagonal track so if you placed it into a stage town hall area and you wanted to track from bottom right to top left you could do so in one smooth movement rather than zigzagging so that people on the remote side of the screen get to feel a little bit seasick. With this one, it's a much, much smoother operation. And I suppose with that, and no further ado, I'm going to move us quite nicely on to the Rally Plus system. I've already described most of this here. It's an intuitive system, but the key elements here that are within all our products, right sound, giving you the right level of sound within the room without having to start doing too many adjustments. At the start of every call, the products will actually listen to the room, understand the volume levels that it requires and set it for you, then giving you the ability via the remote control or the tap control to then adjust. Right light, as you can see me today, the camera that I'm using, the Brio, also has right light, so it's able to adjust. I've got no lights on in this room and it's actually quite a dark room, but it's adjusting the light source from the window here to really give us the best sort of view of me within this meeting. And it keeps optimizing that through the call. And the last but not least, the right site. This is the ability to frame. You can have it on, or you can have it off, or you can have it at the start of the call. Framing allows all participants that join the meeting during the call that are in the room to be captured. Right at this moment in time, we do not do voice capture. So the camera will not turn based on someone talking, but what it will do is make sure that everybody in the room is optimized and stays within clear view for us remote participants actually looking into the room. Just so we nicely move on, I'm gonna move on to Bracknell Town Council now, David. Yeah, thanks, Nigel. So, um, yeah, really interesting the range of products you've got, and we, we think each product does does meet the requirements for for most size uh, parish and town councils. Actually, and just a quick note as well: when Claire did join us, uh, it's an incredibly high ceiling in that office, so there was a bit of echo, absolutely, and there's not much you can do about that. Um, but certainly, you know, um, if any other bit of equipment went in there, would also struggle with that. But we certainly understood what she was saying, and I think she came across really well. But we're we're now going to talk to Bracknell. Sorry, not Bracknell Town Council, because bless Rachel, she's isolating. But we actually have Dan, who is on a Rally Plus system. So, Dan, can you hear us? Yeah, loud and clear, Dave. How are you? Yeah, really well, thanks. So, so Dan, obviously, you're on the Rally Plus at the moment. And uh, as uh, we just saw there, it auto-tracked and, and came and came up to you and followed you around. So, um, Dan, I mean, could you explain a bit about the system that you're, you're in the room with, please? Yes, yeah, so I'm here with the Rally Plus system. Uh, we've got two microphones set up on the desk. I've got the camera in front of me. I'm right at the back of the room, actually, at the moment. There's two speakers and a big 75-inch TV. So it's a great setup here. And uh, everything's coming through loud and clear. And hopefully I am the other side as well. Cool. Uh, well, certainly you sound pretty clear this end, so that's really good. Do you want to, um, could you do us a favour and maybe move around the room and, and go and sit down in a, in a seat for us? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Uh, just walking around the room to the middle of the room now. There you go. How's that? 
it's, do you know what, Dan? I'm going to jump in. It's really great, in actual fact, from a sound. But I think one of the key criticals here, especially with the framing that's coming in now, because you've got that really nice big open door behind you with the wind blowing in there and the trees moving, one of the key sort of figures here is the fact that the camera's staying focused on you. You know what I mean? And this is a key sort of call out. But also, one thing I will say is, I'm on a Logitech product, you're on a Logitech product. These products have duplex sound in them, which means that, Dan, if, if you and I want to talk at the same time and go into a debative conversation, as we know that some council meetings and some you know, uh, enterprise meetings can, so, Dan, if you want to talk at the same time as me as well, then the remote participants should okay, be yeah, really no nice to hear at the same time. time. Okay, it's the same really time as you now. Sounds really awkward, but thank you very much, Dan. It kind of it, it's a duplex thing. So at least if we wanted to in a council meeting, we could debate as well. So so one can't over talk the other. Thanks, Dan. Brilliant. Yeah, cheers, Nigel. Um, so obviously Dan's had to join us today because um, bless Rachel, she's isolated and couldn't join us from Bracknell's um, offices or council chamber. Um, we did play a short video of the setup being put in at the beginning of the event and we'll be playing at the end as well and there'll be a link in the email that goes out. So you'll get to hear from Rachel and get to see um, how the setup was installed as well. Um, but Dan, obviously you're there today, you can hear and see us and it's obviously tracking and following you. It's just you in the room at the moment. Um, but could you maybe just um, use the controller to, to to show us the presets and, and how it works, please? Yeah, so you've got a couple of options. You've got a really nice sort of um, control pad here. And so if you have, say, for example, a council meeting, you want it to easily move to the chair. For example, you could set them as a preset. And um, here we go. Press button. There we go. And it moves across to two preset um, situations in the room. So... If the, cat, if the chair is always in the same place, then it's, it's easy to just move straight to them like that. Fantastic. And if you press the home button, it just zooms back out again. There we go. So this will give you a bit more of an idea of how big the room is that I'm in today. Yeah. Cool. Brilliant. Well, well, thanks ever so much, Dan. Uh, and obviously, we have to thank Quest Hardware, who lent us their room. We, we put this install in uh, a couple of months ago, so they kindly lent us this room at short notice. Um, but we really were keen to show you the, 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 the Rally Plus system in action and the meetup as well. And we, we're just looking in the chat, and there's certainly lots of debate going on. Um, you know, it's such a tough thing, isn't it? Because, you know, this doesn't seem to be like a clear-cut answer. We do, we do know, though, that counters cannot vote. Um, and, and, you know, I, I'm pretty sure we know that it can be broadcast and the public can watch. I don't know about the comments and engagement, though. But certainly, you know, uh, certainly and, you know, for the Welsh contingent, the Welsh are out there. I think all these things are super appropriate because they, they didn't quite take the same track that the English government did. But um, but Dan, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. We hope that everyone um, got a good example of how the Rally Plus works. Uh, uh, and we are happy to do demonstrations individually should people want those as well. Um, but Dan, thanks for joining us, and we'll catch up with you later. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so um, so that's that's that part of the section with Nigel and Logitech, but um, we've we've come in on, a, on time as well, actually, which is quite surprising. We never usually do that, so that's good news. But um, Nigel, I, I think really the main thing is for – you know, from the smallest parish to the largest town council, there's a range of products, mic configurations. Logitech, obviously, a trusted partner as well. Uh, you do regular firmware updates where we update. We can centrally manage all the equipment and update it. So when new features are available, we can make sure that all those all those customers and councils receive those updates as well. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add before we do the Q&A session at the end, Nigel? No, I, I think sometimes you can over talk some of these things. I think the products are very nicely talked for themselves within this session, David. So thank you for that. I suppose the last one to add the yeah, the Logitech also comes with a free software element, which is Logitech Sync as well, which for those guys that are looking at how do I manage this? How do I keep it up to date? Do I have to always walk to the room? Then those elements come along. But no, David, thank you very much for allowing me to talk today. And thank you very much for bringing the products to life in those sessions. Um, that's all for me. Yeah, brilliant. Well, we'll see you back at the Q&A. And we've certainly been having lots of questions put in there, Nigel. So we'll keep you nice and busy later on, I think. So, yeah, looking forward to it. So um, so we now have, oh, I've slipped, skip forward a slide there. We now have um, Peter joining us from Optima. Peter, how are you doing? Not too bad, David. Yourself? Yeah, yeah very well, thanks. Very well, indeed. So obviously, um, you know, really great session there with Nigel and our, our councils uh, talking about the products there, about, you know, the microphones, the cameras. 
but the other element is the is the screen and you um, we do know that you know like in a 75 inch screen and a 55 inch screen and let's be honest anything smaller looks rather small now on a wall doesn't it when you've got a big council chamber so you know obviously we, 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 we're really ha grateful to have you here to talk about projector technology lots of councils have them they maybe haven't invested in, in upgrading their projectors for a little while and it's great to hear from you as an expert about what they should consider and how the technology works so um yeah I'll, what i'll do is i'm controlling the slide deck but i'll move through the slides peter and i'll leave it to you okay brilliant thank you david um just before we start so as david mentioned there i'm one of the projector specialists and i've been in the channel now for about 15 years or so uh the purpose of today is i just wanted to spend about five to ten minutes going through some updates in the projection environment uh, and again there's nothing uh, that's scary or we're not going to deep dive into a particular product the reason we're not going to deep dive into a particular product is because there's lots of different products and what we can do is we can help you find the correct product as opposed to a product and before we go into that i just wanted to sort of take a step back just to you know do a break the ice type slide and ask the question what is a projector now everyone on this call will pretty much know what a projector is uh, basically it is a device that uses an image off a reflective surface what you may not know is that reflective surface is measured in lumens or candela depending on which one you'd like to say and effectively one candle equals one lumen so if you have quite a bright environment you're going to be looking at higher amounts of lumens if you're going to have a darker environment you could probably get away with uh, a, a fewer amount of, of, of illumination there so uh, uh david thank you so there's lots of reasons why uh, uh, projection is still needed. Uh, effectively, if you are looking at a large uh, uh, display, whether or not that is going into a meeting room or a reception area, an auditorium or, or many other different environments, you've basically got three choices. You have a projection, you have a video wall and you have uh, uh, LED walls. OK, the challenges that you will have with uh, a video wall is you will have bezels, even though the bezels have got smaller over recent years you still see a bezel so if you're displaying text-based uh, 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 content some of that text can be uh, uh, skewered if you like by the bezels in the center of the screens uh, and whilst LED is five by far the superior choice to have it's not always possible because again that generally comes with a premium price tag so a lot of people are still opting for projection over other forms of large format displays. Uh, again, there is no, uh, you can also customize your screen with it. If you were to go out and say buy a 75 or 85 inch screen, that's exactly what you're gonna get. You can't increase that size, you can't reduce that size. It is gonna be a solid piece of tin that will have to go onto the wall at that particular size. Um, so one of my, my brother-in-law is actually a health and safety advisor. He travels to various different sites up and down the country uh, and he takes a projector with him in the boot of his car whenever he has to do one of these presentations. So again, with projection, unlike carrying around a 75, 85 or even 98 inch screen now, again, he could just put it under his arm, walk into a building, do his presentation for 45, 50 minutes uh, and then leave uh, uh, quite easily. What you will also find with projection, depending on what sort of content you are looking to display, is that contrast ratios are typically much greater than a standard sort of TV screen, if we're going to use uh, some of that phraseology as well. So especially when it comes to things like branding, people get quite protective over the different color saturations projection generally speaking can offer a, a wider depth of color now when we're talking about color that is how the mind perceives brightness and we can come on to that a bit later on one of the challenges with some of the older sort of tv screens was screen burn so for example if you had a canteen area within your building or if you needed to display uh, static type signs for example what we've seen is an increase in um, COVID related information displays uh, and if you think back when the COVID information was first introduced it was keep two meters apart well the government guidelines uh, changed a few weeks later and of course that messaging then had to change we know of customers that had then gone and spent thousands of pounds on physical signs only for them to be non-use uh, uh, only for them to be made redundant because they were no longer uh, with a late uh, set of legislation so again, with projection uh, and a piece of CRM software, you can instantly change and update uh, uh, your visitors and your employees uh, within a moment's notice. 
Also with projection, uh, I've actually been into uh, various different uh, chamber of commerce. And again, a lot of these buildings, as you're most likely aware, are old. And with that becomes things of what you can and can't do. For example, the one I was in, you couldn't put a load of uh, TV screens around the room. You had to rely on projections to, again, it minimizes the uh, sort of impact and environmental damage that you'd have to do to deploy uh, a certain signage. Um, I put clever projection in their mapping. I've got a slide on that uh, a bit later on. So again, I'll cover that off. And the final one is interactive learning. Now, when people say interactive learning, uh, it's not necessarily aimed towards a classroom. We've worked with social care services with people say who have dementia, who use a projection with an IR curtain to interact with it to help stimulate their mind. And there are lots of different examples we can do where we're getting the human, you know, the person to actually engage with various different content, um, whether that's from an educational or medical point of view. Okay, so again, lots of different stuff we can do with projection. Thank you, David. So I've got three pictures up here of when things go wrong. Now, the good news is we can help you get this right. And we've got some examples of that uh, in a moment. I've actually been on site and I have seen very similar situations to what you're looking at now. Uh, and I'm just going to cover off the uh, these pictures. So on the left hand side, you've got quite a few things wrong with that picture. Most notably is the size. But if you dig deep a little bit deeper into it, you'll see there is something called soft edges. I wouldn't say that projector is bright enough for the environment. And also the resolution is incorrect as well. Uh, I, I suppose fundamentally the biggest flaw is the people at the front of the room will be absolutely fine. They will be able to read that text. However, if you're sitting at the rear of the room, uh, you're probably going to struggle a little bit. And again, that kind of defeats what that has been designed to do. Uh, the second one is environmental issues. For example, what you have there is uh, you have the screen at the bottom, which has been bleeding out over the image. Again, that's not uncommon for projectors to do that when people haven't, uh, uh, people have just gone off and bought a projector off the shelf. They haven't identified what exactly they need. Uh, and again, that's quite a simple fix to do. So we can help you with that. And finally, um, I always like to ask the question when I show this picture, what came first, the chicken or the egg or the projector or the uh, LED lighting at the front there? To be fair, that is actually quite a simple fix. I mean, if, it, if a projector screen had to go in that location, what you can do is move the projector to the left and we can keystone it in. But again, it just goes to show that, um, you know, if you, you need to do the, the projection stuff at the, the start of the process as opposed to the, the latter stages, should we say. So again, three examples of how things have gone wrong. When they go right, and if you want to work with us, uh, we can we can make it look absolutely immaculate. For example, on the left-hand side, uh, you've got an electric drop-down screen. So when you walk into the room, you can turn the projector on, the screen will come down, the projector will start, and away you go. I mentioned projection mapping earlier, and I just wanted to give you uh, an example. I'd be very surprised if you were to go into this depth, uh, depth and length, uh, length. However, I wanted to show you something that was aesthetically good. Effectively, what's happening there is we have projection, and it has been allocated a certain space within that stage, and we have mapped the projection onto that object to stop spillage. Now, if you were to do an event or if you were to showcase something special and you wanted a projector to map on that, we can do that, okay? It doesn't have to be to those pillars or anything like that, but the, the, the capability is there, and we're more than welcome, uh, more than happy to support you. So lamp versus laser. I mentioned that we've got some new technology and basically for the last sort of four or five years, lamp has been uh, somewhat decreasing in favour of laser. And there's a couple of reasons or a few reasons for that. And I'm just going to highlight a few of them. So with your aging projectors that are lamp based, the key, selling, the key selling point or the USP with laser is there are no lamps at all. So if you have a large auditorium or a sports hall, hall or anything like that where you have to go above uh, six foot, I believe, you have to do a risk assessment and you have to make sure that everything is safe. A lamp is a bit like a light bulb. At some point, it's going to ping and you're going to have to replace it. With laser, you take away all that, uh, all that stuff so you can just literally hang and bang a projector onto a wall, onto a ceiling, and let it do its thing. 
that of course reduces any issues that are related to the lamp. Um, what we find is that when people replace lamps, they generally go for the cheapest option, but that means that they don't necessarily have the certification accredit accreditations or the official stamp from the vendor. And when I uh, and when I last looked at the uh, reports of some of the maintenance issues, 90%, pretty much 90% of all projector issues are lamp related. So by eliminating that, you can then, um, you know, just concentrate on the projector just working. And of course, total cost of ownership is reduced because you don't have to pay for any replacement lamps. Uh, and I put in there, it's virtually maintenance free. We would suggest you give it a quick clean every now and again for a laser. Um, but that said, it is uh, dust certified. I put there a couple of points down, IPX certified. Um, you do have different orientation. For example, we work with museums, and if you have a projector facing onto a physical 3D map with moving content, oh, then again, you can uh, you can uh, make sure there's no anomalies near it. Uh, and finally, I suppose, you, not only do you get superior contrast, but it's also quiet. For example, if you have a small conference room with a lamp-based projector, if that gets hot, you will hear a fan fire up. There is a consistent uh, noise level, which is deemed to be quieter, small little humming sound on a laser-based projector. Uh, thank you, David. So the clear winner was the laser on that. Uh, and how can Cloudy support you? Well, we can help you find the correct projector. I mentioned at the start there that we're not going to deep dive into products for the reason that, you know, a few simple questions, we can get you on track and away you go. Uh, we can also help you design the overall install. So if you are looking at deploying a Logitech video conference, whether that's Rally or Teams, with a projector, we can do the proof of concept with you. Um, we can answer any questions you've won. I've done projection for years. I've heard it all before very quickly. For example, someone asked if they could put a projector on the front of a bicycle once. The answer was yes, because we've got smaller projectors with batteries in them. Uh, and if you're interested, it was for a charity event on a closed off road. We can offer you free trials and demos. I recommend this in every possible opportunity. You get to see it before you make the commitment. Professional services as well. If you were doing an immersive room, like the diagram on the right-hand side, again, we can help with the with the, um, the concept behind that. So I'm just conscious of time. Uh, and again, we deal with um, UK registered companies, so no third parties from foreign countries with no credit limits or uh, with dodgy credit limits or anything like that. It's all genuine. It's all controlled. It's all regulated. Uh, and again, what we've got is a simple process behind it. So if you are looking at a projector, we're going to be getting you a handful of part numbers onto the website uh, for you to browse. And of course, if there are any questions off the back of that, or if you want to know if it will work, feel free to ask. That's what we're there for, to help and support. So. Um, that's all from me. I welcome any Q&A questions at the end of the session. And um, thank you very much, David. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thanks so much, Peter, for joining us and talking about um, the uh, projector technology. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of councils have uh, a lot of lamp based projectors now and maybe you could be thinking about the upgrades. And as you can see, there's some great tech, you know, with the laser, which works in low, you know, high light conditions, the low cost of ownership and maintenance as well. Uh, and as Peter said, you know, they've got a great program to ensure you are satisfied about sending out trial equipment and making sure it's going to be fit for purpose. And um, once again, lots of questions coming through. So, um, you know, it really is busy out there. We've never seen this many questions and comments. So clearly, you know, quite a, a lot of different opinions and subjects to be discussed in further detail. But that's that's a good thing. You know, it's an exciting period for everyone. So I'm going to talk very briefly about sort of what next and how this will link up into sort of a really a much bigger uh, overall system. And obviously talking about broadcasting meetings, etc., is wonderful. But there are some further steps about how to make a meeting more engaging and from, you know, the, the creation of the agenda pack to sharing it and the after uh, and, and, and the follow ups afterwards. And, and I've got a slide here at the moment. And where we are, where we're talking about broadcasting meetings with the Logitech and the Optima equipment, we are we are in the meeting itself. But there's, as you know, a lot of build up before the meeting and afterwards, after the meeting as well. And having a solution that is purely digital, that integrates with not just um, the technology, but also the people as well to allow further interactions, engagement is so important. And that's why we partner with a company called Decisions. And Decisions allows you to build 
agenda packs, to distribute the agenda packs, and to do all those follow-ups in terms of who's doing what and creating those um, those meeting books. So uh, we actually have another event uh, happening next month uh, where we have decisions talking about their software, about how it works in 365. Um, it is great for parish and town councils. It is ideal. It's at the right price point as well, uh, and, and it works really well. So um, obviously what we're talking about today is broadcasting your meetings, but you know who knows how, how it's going to go with the legislation, the law changes, but fingers crossed the government does give the, the sector a bit of flexibility to allow them to, to meet in person but virtually and in a hybrid way as well. But certainly if anyone's interested, please do attend our meeting, our event in August, where we'll be talking with decisions about uh, building those agenda packs in Microsoft 365 and sharing them within Teams and within Zoom. So um, we come on to the Q&A session. Now, I think this is going to last a bit longer than expected. Uh, there's been loads of questions there, um, but I'd obviously like to bring in uh, uh, my ex the experts, Nigel and Pete, and also Claire and uh, I think Dan's left uh, the, the customer's office now, so he's not, not with us anymore. But, uh, you know, thanks, everyone, for sitting through this session. It actually flew by. Um, so certainly, it, hopefully it was of interest to the people watching it a moment ago. But um, we have had quite a few questions fielded in. And uh, what Ryan will do is try and put them on the screen and filter through them. So I haven't really been able to read them and talk. I, I'm not very good at multitasking in that respect. But Ryan, do you want to put some random questions up on the screen? And what we will do is we'll answer all questions afterwards and put, uh, put them uh, available to the internet so people can read through them if we don't cover them all now. So uh, Ryan, do you want to put a question on the screen for us, please? Brilliant. So um, we have a, a question here. We moved around to a different venue in the parish for our meetings. Is there a mobile system? We have 16 councillors. So um, thanks very much for that question. And, and this is a big thing we see where, you know, um, that the meetings are conducted in multiple locations. Uh, so um, the answer is yes. Um, uh, Nigel, shall so I let you answer that one, if that's OK, in terms of mobile systems? Yeah, no problem at all. I mean, the, the nice thing about the agility of the meetup is you can pretty much take it wherever you want to because of the size of the product and the weight of the product and the easy setup of the product, you can take it to wherever you want. But if we're looking at things such as perhaps an Optima screen on a cart that then needs all of the Logitech products around it, then all of the mounting brackets come through from Logitech as well. So you're able to give an agile solution so you can move it from room to room or the smaller of the Logitech products, the one that Claire's using, can be taken to pretty much any meeting within a bag. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the uh, Rally Bar Mini as well, it's designed for portability, isn't it? It's, uh, you know, one cable, expandable mics. So you've got the meetup, which could be for the small parish to councils that want to move around. But then you've got the meetup as well uh, with the, the additional microphones that could be added. And uh, we are seeing a lot of interest in that, actually, where um, the equipment is mounted on a on a you know on a, on a cart and moved from room to room and can be used so that certainly does work but i, I hope that's answered your question uh so the meetup and the mini certainly would be portable and combined with a projector as well would give you the ability to move around obviously you do need internet and i've seen a couple of questions about that and i'm sure um ron will put those on the screen but very quickly finally claire uh, is there idea with the meetup to use it in different locations yes hopefully um Generally, most of our meetings are in this room, but we do have another centre. And if we do slightly larger things, such as our mayor making, we would want to be able to transport it so we can record them. Brilliant, exactly. And um, Claire, what we didn't um, demonstrate, actually, with the microphone technology ability to mute the calls as well, have you played with that feature yet at all? Yeah, it's just... <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, that's that's work. Work. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so th that's a great feature. If you know you do want to make sure that certainly conversations are private, you've got the ability just to tap the mic, and then there you go. Um, and uh, obviously, with the meetup, you've got one expandable mic. But with the the mini, uh, how many expandable mics are with the mini, please, Nigel? It's just one with the mini. Okay, one. And with uh, the Rally Plus system, the big one is it seven? We can expand yeah. to. It's seven, yeah, very much so. I mean, but obviously we're not talking about an agile solution, then we're talking about a fixed solution for a room. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and those mics get daisy-chained into one another as well, so it's actually quite flexible in terms of how you wire those around. But uh, I hope that answered your questions around portability, and I'm sure we'll, we'll skirt around the subject a bit more in a moment. So, uh, um, Ryan, have you got any more questions, please? 
So we've got uh, my regular meeting room, but it does not have Wi-Fi. <laughs> so yeah, that, I, we knew that would come up. Absolutely. So we do need some form of connectivity. I, I suppose there are options though, because what you could do is, um, you know, one option is to record the meetings and then post them up to to your YouTube channel afterwards, which you know it wouldn't get the full interaction, which actually isn't kind of legal yet anyway um but would allow uh, as claire mentioned people who want to see what the meeting was about planning permission or something else was of interest to them to be able to view that so first of all you could record the meetings very simply in teams and zoom hit the record button and then upload it to your youtube channel later um but if you don't have wi um, wi-fi then the only obvious obvious options are 4g now um the interesting thing with 4g is you can actually get a better connection than on your Wi-Fi with a 4G connection. It's incredible. So, you know, for a, uh, a council that does meet in different village halls, um, but they don't have connectivity, you actually might find, and I, I see Stephen's put something there, £16 per month for unlimited connectivity. You can buy a 4G router, um, very small device, um, that you can have all pre-set up, so as soon as you flick the power on, it connects to the router, connects to the internet, and off you go. So there are options, definitely, uh, and we'd, we'd be more than happy to explore them with you if that was a thing. So thanks very much, Helen, for the question. Ryan, have you got another one, please? Um, so do you have software to remove the echo effect from slightly empty rooms? So good question. I mean, as Nigel mentioned, you know, these rooms weren't designed for this back when they were created. And we do know a lot of council chambers have high ceilings, lots of um, hard furnishing on the walls, painting, stuff like that. So, Nigel, what are Logitech doing about this, please? We, we've embedded three styles of microphone within each mic. So it, you're not just getting one microphone. You get a noise cancelling, echo cancelling, and beam forming microphone. So what you get is the effect of the microphone being able to listen to attenuation of voice so if you've got a high pitch speaker or a low uh, low tone speaker the microphone will actually blend that if you get more than one person talking it will blend that as well the echo cancelling and noise cancellation is working on room ambience now be ultra cautious there's no technology out there that will actually suppress a room that is not any good for microphones but what you're getting within the environment if you have where the people are sat within the right sort of specifications. And I'll, I'll make a document available via Cloudy before on mic placement and acoustic sounding. We've got a really great document to help you guys sort of understanding mic placement. And that's the best way of getting over noisy rooms. We've had everything from ticking radiators where there's been air bleeding for a radiator and all the remote participants could hear was that radiator. By having a really well-placed microphone within that room that actually then has the ability to hear the radiator and then cancel it, that brings all of your acoustics back in without very, very expensive acoustic elements being added to the room. Wow, so really quite interesting. Those mics have a lot in them. Not it's not just the mic as you described. It does quite a lot there, and um, no, that that ability to cancel out noises that could affect meetings is just as important. And what we have seen with a lot of equipment is, you know, um, it, it's it's great you can see someone, but it's so important you can hear them as well. And it's just as important the audio as well as the video. So that's where using the mics like this, whether it's a single mic or a daisy chain mic, does make a bit of a difference. Um, so, uh, Nigel, anything else you want to mention about mics before we move on to the next question? No, I think, that, I mean, it's, a, it's such a broad topic. As I say, I have some really great documentation from the, from ourselves that I will make available to you guys. That can be sent out to all the guys that have joined today, and it will give them a really, really great understanding, not just from a Logitech perspective. It kind of talks about acoustics in general, but it's a big subject. So thanks for that. Cool. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thanks, Robert, for the question. Hope we've answered it there. And um, any more, please do let us know. And like Nigel said, we'll, we'll post some information on the website afterwards. Um, Ryan, should we have a couple more questions? Do you supply uh, equipment for large village halls, etc.? Um, so, well, thanks very much for that question. And, and the answer is yes. I mean, as uh, as Peter explained, you know, he's, he's got conference halls, you know, well, a huge building. So, uh, yeah, the, the great thing is the equipment does scale up and down. You've got the uh, the, the 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 Rally Plus, which is obviously designed for fixed systems installed with microphones embedded in walls, etc. 
um, you know, as well as uh, maybe a, a projector, uh, as well as the portable meetup and, and mini as well. So uh, we, we can absolutely spec out for large rooms and make it so it, it works reliably and, you know, obviously does the things that you need it to do as well. So, um, yeah, f absolutely. Uh, not a problem at all. And, yeah, just, just get in touch. That would be great. So uh, thank you for the question. Um, Ryan, you'll have two more, Ryan. Yeah, because it's important. These are great questions. So how much bandwidth is required um right so yeah adsl poor 4g coverage so toaster bless you you're not not doing not having much luck there are you just around the corner from us as well actually so um yeah i mean with an adsl connection on the upstream it's it's not it's going to struggle nigel have you got the actual numbers on the bandwidth that's required is it saying that yeah it, it's an interesting debate of conversation it depends on platform you're using so if you're using microsoft and you've got skype in there at this moment in time or you could be using zoom each and every one of those platforms will be different now with microsoft redesigning their teams platform the quantity of bandwidth required if you are microsoft teams will be less so what you're looking at for a standard video call because what you've got to remember is, is everybody at this moment in time is talking into a virtual cloud so it's not about the quantity of people sat in the room talking that doesn't affect the bandwidth effectively is the output to the cloud so roughly what we're looking at per session is somewhere between 75 to 1 meg per session roughly is what you're looking at if you were really really pushing it so believe it or not you don't need as much bandwidth for video calls as you might think that you do okay well that's good to know and um you know we'd be we'd be more than happy to have a chat with you with anyone regarding connectivity we we do 4g connections we're an ee partner um we can get sim cards that connect to multiple networks would you believe it so you might be in four different village halls and get coverage for one of them but not for another so there are solutions but um yeah i mean adsl based on what nigel just mentioned might scrape it um you might put a bit of what's called quas quality of service on the router um but i mean toaster just around the corner um we do quite a lot around that area actually and they've got fairly good connectivity so i'll be more than happy to have a chat if that's a thing if you want to look into that though but thank you um so ryan so we did the last question then Two more questions. Two more questions. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, can you spot a step by step guide on how to broadcast a council meeting for those who have absolutely no experience whatsoever? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, what is really interesting is that this wasn't really a thing, um, you know, sort of four months ago. Um, you know, people were meeting virtually over Zoom. Um, I don't think many people really thought on Teams, uh, but really thought about what next. But you know, so this is quite new and people are scrambling to get all that content and that valuable information together here at Cloudy. Like we've put this event on and we work with our partners to, to, to find a solution that works really well. So um, we, we are trying to make things really easy, though, Chris. So absolutely. We're looking about um, standardizing and, and making sure that it's really easy. And we do actually have some deals around that. So we will be take your um, your comments into uh, into consideration. Absolutely come up with something that hopefully uh, will do that. And I know Ryan, who's our one of our installers, he, you know, he's, he's done time lapses of installs and stuff like that. So definitely we'll, we'll put something together and hopefully it will you know give you the confidence that when you come to do your meeting and it, it all goes to plan and there's no problems um but claire i mean speaking to yourself uh i mean we only installed this equipment yesterday for claire so this is how tight it is you know um but claire how, how you know you've had the equipment for one day what's your experience of it please so far like i say it's been pretty good i've only really used it for a team meeting um, and we've only used it with two people in the room so it's a bit early for me to tell you how good it's going to be it yeah. is quite an empty room here we have had it renovated and so the only furniture currently in is the table and the chair i'm sitting on um yeah. and, the te there, and the teddy at the back as well i see <laughs> there, but, yeah um, that's it. well placed it will be a lot less echoey in here when there's 20 odd people which would be what would be more normal yeah, absolutely. So brilliant. Well, thanks ever so much. So we'll have one more question, please, and then we'll wrap things up. Um, so uh, thanks, Patrick. So we meet in a church. Uh, we speak in the room in public to hear what's going on as well. How do we solve the problem of the equipment coping with each other? Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously, um, there are different requirements when we start getting really large and certainly with things like churches with very high ceilings, it might be a, a bit more of an in-depth conversation rather than just a, a council chamber. Um, but certainly the technology does work well. I mean, these mics, Nigel, what's the field, uh, the radius of per mic, please, for capture? 
you got ter- you got 13 foot per mic but i think in these type of situations one of the nice things you've got here is if you're using the current system that could be within an environment so if you have microphones and you have speakers in the environment you have the capability with the soft platform you're using to select those or you could select logitech so you could turn one or the other off but the actual sort of overall range mic um, is 13 foot per mic so you have an omni um, which basically means circular all the way around the mic so if i was stood very close to the mic i would be roughly about six and a half foot away to be heard and then someone on the other side will be six and a half foot away so roughly around about that element and obviously standing on the fat now again big conversation with microphones you have the same instance if someone decides to turn their back on the microphone then you're talking away from the mic you have a radically different situation but I'm very, very comfortable for any of those guys that want to introduce themselves through to you, David, to have a much deeper, more in-depth conversation away from this one around things like acoustics and how to get the best from it. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks, Nigel. And, and thanks, Patrick, for that question. Uh, and if you did want to speak after, it's happy to look into it in further detail. So we, we do have loads of questions, and I'm conscious of time and wrapping up because people have got things to do and places to be. Um, but, you know, we do really value your, your, your questions. are so great because I'm sure if someone's got the question, someone else is thinking that. And we will go through them and answer all of them and put them all together and send that out as well. Uh, and a recording will be available afterwards. So um, just to really wrap things up now, um, uh, Ryan, if you could put the screen on for us and we'll just finish things off, that'd be great. great. Um, but you know, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Peter, Nigel, Claire, um, poor Rachel can join us, but Dan as well. Um, but Cloudy, you know, we're very proactive in the sector, as you might be able to tell. And we run lots of events all designed around basically spending, spending best practice uh, that things are appropriate and in, important to local government. So we've got lots of previous events that we've been that we've run and people can visit those by going to the URL on the screen there about web accessibility, building agenda packs, Microsoft 365 licensing, finance with partners like Realtors. So please do check that out and there's lots of information. And also we've got lots more events coming up. So next month, as I mentioned, we've got about building the modern agenda pack uh, and we've got our partner decisions coming to talk about that. We also have web accessibility. We're also attending the SLCC National Conference and really looking forward to that. Um, I think the first event uh, in quite a long time that we all would have really been to. So I think it'd be nice to actually see people in person rather than over a computer screen. So we're looking forward to that. And also there's a bit of a, a bit of a secret launch of the National Conference for a new feature, but I'm not going to say much more, but I'll let the SLCC launch that one. And then finally, we have our Social Responsibility Summit. So Cloudy is CSR recognised for a silver accreditation for the work we do in the community and for the environment. And we are helping councils with their CSR as well and work with partners like Logitech to, to basically um, to, to help councils with CSR and defining it and reporting it, et cetera, as well. So please do uh, come and visit us and join up for those events. But it's been lovely having you and we really appreciate it. And if you stay a bit longer, you'll get to see Claire speak as well. But thanks ever so much and do look after yourselves. Bye bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Rachel Gorge. I'm the office manager at Bracknell Town Council. Uh, we're the largest parish council in uh, the Bracknell Forest Borough. Um, we have 12 wards and 27 councillors. We, we've decided that it's time to upgrade and this does mean at this point upgrading everything because without changing the internet we can't move on to cloudy and uh, using Microsoft Teams and things like that. Um, but hybrid meetings are something that it's going to be so useful for us um, into the future. So even though legally at the moment we're not allowed to hold hybrid meetings, um, we can involve the public through the hybrid technology that Cloudy have installed for us. So we can allow people who don't live locally to do presentations for the council. We can allow public to join from the comfort of their own homes. So part of installing the hybrid meeting equipment is to try to reduce our carbon footprint a bit. And this is one of the ways we're going to start to do that. The system that you've installed for us um, was tailored to our needs. 
So we have quite a large council chamber having 27 councillors. We also then have at least three officers present when we have a full council meeting. Sometimes we can have the public in the room and the shape of our room, the shape of our table and how people sit in the meetings was really a big part of it. You discussed all of the different options with us to make sure that we were getting the right level of technology for um, the size of room and the amount of people that we're going to have in there. Um, after doing a test with you, after you installed it, I'm absolutely amazed that you don't have to shout when you're at the opposite end of the room um, to be heard. And also, it's not blasting in your ears, which other companies were concerned about the strength of the speakers you might have to use could impact those people sitting closest to them. But you've managed to work out a system that will work for everybody in that room. Um, the installation process from Cloudy was great as well. Um, we had, again, lots of clean communication when it came to sorting out dates and organising parking and everything that we needed for us to be organised. Um, you arrived with all of the equipment that you needed and you just got on with it. Um, the one thing I would say is that I was sad that you didn't have a lunch break and you just carried on straight through <laughs> because you were working non-stop for the, all, all those hours that you were there. Um, you were relentless, let's be honest. <laughs> You were relentless. You guys just, you got the job done. It looks fantastic. You tidied up afterwards and um, it is brilliant. From the beginning of dealing with Cloudy, the customer service has been exceptional. Um, I've not had as many demos with, in fact, I've had no demos with other companies. Um, whereas you did three demos for us. Um, you visited us several times, we've had several calls and just that connection that we've got and the communication has been second to none and that was a real big um, pushing point in us moving with Cloudy, especially for our hybrid equipment. everybody um, in the staff team is, is, is significantly happier uh, with the system and the support that we have now. So for councillors, for example, um, over the recent coronavirus uh, lockdown, we've been able to maintain online meetings because all of our councillors have access to Teams via their tablets. So I can sit here in my, um, here in my front room uh, managing uh, uh, 19 councillors and four or five officers and members of the public holding an online meeting um, with the, uh, the integrated system that Cloudy provided. The one thing that I'm really pleased to see is that our actual councillor uh, attendance at the meetings has actually been boosted. Um, we, we're getting um, you know, virtually 100% attendance at all the meetings, which I think is a really good thing. Um, and I am in no doubt whatsoever that's by the virtue of the fact that they're, they're able to access the, the, the remote meetings via Teams.